Hello everyone, Hyper here, and this is the Survival Hunter BFA preview. With most specs in the game, whenever something is not working properly, Blizzard either tweaks some abilities and talents here and there or shuffles around the talent tree, but not with Survival Hunter. Ever since its not-so-successful rework at the beginning of Legion, Blizzard has been looking at ways of improving this spec, and hopefully this is what they've done going into BFA. Instead of changing abilities and talents, they completely revamped the spec once again and added a lot of new talents and removed a lot of unnecessary ones. For this spec, I will leave a link in the description box where you can read through all of the changes in more detail because there are so many that I will have to go through them kind of quickly. First of all, let's take a look at all of the baseline abilities that were removed from the Survival Hunter. We have Carve, Flanking Strike, Mongoose Bite, Waylay, Explosive Trap, Hatchet Toss, and Lacerate. So right off the bat you can see that there are a lot of things removed. Out of these abilities, Flanking Strike and Mongoose Bite were added as talents in the tier 6 row, and Explosive Trap was kind of reworked into Wildfire Bomb. With the removal of all of those abilities, we got some new ones as well. Aspect of the Eagle is essentially rule of law from Holy Paladin, which extends the range of our abilities so we can DPS from range. Coordinated Assault is our new offensive cooldown, which gives us 20% bonus damage and increases the chance of your kill command to reset by 25%. Disengage was removed as a talent and added as a baseline ability, works the same as every other spec. And we also got Kill Command, and this is our main builder, our main focus builder rather. And every time you use it, you have a 25% chance of it resetting, and you can use it again. The Serpent Sting, which also used to be a talent, is now a baseline ability. And this is kind of a maintenance dot that you want to always keep up on the target. And like I mentioned before, we have Wildfire Bomb, which is an AoE filler ability, but it costs no focus. So technically it's worth using on single target as well. The Survival Hunter Mastery was changed from Hunting Companion, which buffed our Mongoose Bite, to Spirit Bond, which increases the damage of our focus spending abilities. And this also applies to our pet. And on top of that, we get a little bit of a self-heal, but that's kind of a secondary benefit of our Mastery. Next, let's take a look at the talents, because there were plenty of changes in this area. In Tier 1, Animal Instincts, Throwing Axes, and Way of the Mach Natal were removed, so we have a brand new row. The first ability here is Viper's Venom, and this adds a proc to our rotation, making it a little bit more dynamic. And also it's nice because if you get pretty lucky with procs, you never have to spend focus on refreshing your Serpent Sting. Terms of Engagement makes our Harpoon generate focus and reset whenever an enemy is killed. So in an ideal situation, this would be good for like Mythic Plus or leveling, where enemies are dying pretty often. But as it stands right now, Viper's Venom it just does so much damage that it's worth taking in pretty much every situation. Then we have Alpha Predator. And this makes your kill command deal extra damage and have two charges, so you're able to generate more focus over time. In Tier 2, Murder of Crows was moved from this tier to Tier 4. Mortal Wounds and Snake Hunter were removed, so again we have a brand new row. The first talent here is Guerrilla Tactics, and this increases the damage of your Wildfire Bomb and now it has two charges instead of one. The middle talent here is Hydra's Bite, which makes your Serpent Sting cleave to two additional targets and deal extra damage. Butchery was moved to this row, uh, it was previously I believe in the tier 6 row in Legion. In tier 3, we saw the removal of Disengage, which was made baseline, and also Post Haste was moved from this tier to tier 5. Instead, we see the addition of Natural Mending, which gives a CDR on our exhilaration, which is the self heal, and also we saw Camouflage move to this row, and it works the same as other specs. In tier 4, Keltrops and Guerrilla Tactics were removed, and we saw a slight tweak here on Steel Trap with the change on its cooldown from 60 seconds to 30 seconds. Murder of Crows was also moved to this row and it still works the same way, where if a target dies with Murder of Crow active on them, you get a reset on the cooldown. Bloodseeker is a new talent which makes your kill command apply a dot and increase your attack speed for each enemy with a dot on them. Currently, 
uh, this talent is bugged and it does not apply a dot to the enemy, but you still get the attack speed uh, for 8 seconds after you kill command a unique enemy. So once this gets fixed, there is potential here for a kill command build, but as it stands right now, it's not all that useful. In tier 5, Sticky Bombs and Ranger's Net were removed and Camouflage was moved to tier 3 like I mentioned before. And we get a new talent in Born to be Wild, which reduces the cooldown on our aspect of Cheetah and Exhilarate. So if you run Born to be Wild along with Natural Mending, you will have your Exhilarate up very very often. Post Haste was moved to this row and still works the same way. And we also see the addition of Binding Shot, but it, now it is a root instead of a stun. In tier 6, Butchery was moved from this talent like I mentioned before. Dragon's Fire Grenade was removed and Serpent Sting was removed as a talent and made into a baseline ability. Tip of the Spear is a new talent which increases our Raptor Strike damage every time we kill command and this stacks up to 3 times. Mongoose Bite works the same way as it did in Legion where it used to be a baseline ability and now is made into a talent. Flanking Strike again works similar to Legion where it's a focus generator slash gap closer that deals a decent amount of damage but nothing crazy. In tier 7, Spitting Cobra, Expert Trapper and Aspect of the Beast were removed. And we see the addition of Birds of Prey which is a new talent that extends the duration of our coordinated assault based on how many times we cast Raptor Strike. Wildfire Infusion is again a new talent, and this buffs our Wildfire Bomb with one of three upgrades. The first upgrade is Shrapnel Blast. When you cast this, it makes your Mongoose Bite, Raptor Strike, and Butchery apply a bleed to the target, and this stacks up to three times. Pheromone Bomb is the second upgrade, and this makes your kill command have a 100% chance of resetting whenever you use it. So you can just chain kill commands together until you're back at full focus. And then the third infusion is Volatile Bomb. And this deals some extra damage against all of the targets that already have Serpent Sting on them and also refreshes the duration of Serpent Sting on all of the targets hit by it. Chakrams is again a new talent and this is kind of just a focus spender on a 20 second cooldown. It's kind of boring but it has a very cool animation. Now that you understand what the new talents are, let's take a look at a potential single target build. With better tuning in the future, there will be more builds that you can go, but currently this is the one that is doing the most damage. But again, keep in mind that these are beta numbers, so there will be a final tuning pass shortly before BFA releases. Viper's Venom and Hydra's Bite work super well together, because currently Serpent Sting is one of our hardest hitting abilities, and buffing that is a huge amount of extra damage. Then, in the tier 4 row, we take Steel Trap. One big reason is because this is a bleed damage instead of murder of crows which is physical. So for single target where you don't get the benefit of resetting crows, taking steel, steel trap is a DPS increase. Then in the tier 6 row, you can either take flanking strike or tip of the spear. Uh, I prefer flanking strike because it does generate you more focus, it essentially generates enough focus for one extra raptor strike and it deals some damage on its own, plus you get that slight mobility increase from it. I don't really like playing with Mongoose Bite, even though in damage it's almost equal to Flanking Strike, because you have essentially have to set up windows where you can Mongoose Bite, and with my current haste I can only get about 5 or 6 Mongoose Bites anyway, and the first 3 Mongoose Bites will be lower damage than a Raptor Strike. So... Taking Flanking Strike makes your rotation easier, and it also deals more damage, so that's a no-brainer for me. With higher haste values, we will probably see Mongoose Bite builds. Then in the last row for single target, we take the obvious choice, which is Birds of Prey. Just because we want our coordinated assault to be up for as long as possible, since that's our major offensive CD. This build is fairly straightforward to play. Essentially, you want to keep up your Serpent Sting on the target, and you want to keep your Steel Trap and Wildfire Bomb on cooldown. And outside of that, you just want to get as many Raptor Strikes as you can inside your Coordinated Assault. Um, and then whenever you're Focus Starved, you will either Flanking Strike or Kill Command depending on which one is on cooldown. So let's take a look at this build on the target dummy. 
We go in with Serpent Sting, throw down our trap, Wildfire Bomb. Then we go into Coordinated Assault and we just go ham on the target. Most of the time you will get procs to refresh your Serpent Sting like I mentioned before. But sometimes you can get unlucky and actually have to spend focus to refresh it. Which is kind of annoying to do. But it, it deals such a significant amount of damage that it's worth doing in my opinion. And then you just kill command and get flanking strikes as often as possible to keep up your coordinated assault due to that talent. For AoE, the only changes you have to make is go from Birds of Prey to Wildfire Infusion and from Steel Trap to Murder of Crows. Now, on target dummies, I obviously won't get resets on Crows, so it's more, it would be more beneficial to take Steel Trap. But in a dungeon where you can actually get the reset benefit from it, Crows will be slightly better. And Wildfire Infusion is just a very nice ability depending on which upgrade you proc. Volatile Bomb with this build is the most beneficial. If you happen to go Butchery, then Shrapnel would be the most beneficial. And then there might be some builds where Pheromone Bomb would be more beneficial, but I assume that would be like an Alpha Predator and Bloodseeker build. But since Bloodseeker is currently bugged, I haven't really tested or played around with that too much. So with this talent setup, the, your biggest goal is to just chuck out wildfire bombs as often as possible and then get crows resets whenever you can the first bomb will always be shrapnel and if you sit on it i'm not sure if this is a bug or not but if you sit on shrapnel bomb or on wildfire bomb for a long time then it just kind of defaults back to shrapnel and that's always the one you start with since i'm not running butchery i'm only going to get a raptor strike on my main target so i'll i crows as i run in i shrapnel and then I just get two or three Raptor Strikes up. And as soon as I get Serpent Sting procs, I want to start using those up. Because Serpent Sting will be our biggest source of damage on AoE. One thing about Serpent Sting, when it cleaves, it always cleaves to the three or to the two closest targets. So you have to keep that in mind when you're applying Serpent Sting to targets. Is You always want to target one that doesn't have uh, Serpent Sting on it. And that way it's going to cleave to nearby targets. So the AoE rotation is fairly simple with this build. And I have a weak right here that tells me what bomb is coming up, which is pretty useful. But if you look at my damage breakdown, most of it does come from our Serpent Sting. And that's mostly because the front-loaded damage and the first two rows of talents synergize so well together when it comes to AoE. And then here, like I said before, I'm not getting any resets on crows, but I'll just chuck them out there anyway. Um, so overall, I don't know, Survival Hunter feels fairly smooth to play. On AoE, it's a little boring, because mostly because some of our talents don't work properly and are not scaled properly or tuned properly. But once we see more builds uh, come up, such as the Alpha Predator Bloodseeker build, which I would be really interested in trying, but currently, our Serpent Sting just does so much more damage than our Kill Command that this talent is essentially useless. And Bloodseeker doesn't apply a dot, so that whole synergy is gone. So once everything is in order and fixed, Survival Hunter will have basically two or three builds that they can go with for single target, and then the same for AoE. So that's going to be really interesting to see. One thing that I'd also like to mention is Survival Hunter Utility. Because most melee classes have a few utility abilities, Survival Hunter is packed with them. So first of all, we have our Gap Closer, which is Harpoon. And if you talent into it, this actually resets when you kill a target. And this is a pretty decent Gap Closer. It's essentially a slower charge because you have to throw out the chain, then it happens. Then if you take Flanking Strike, which you definitely should, you have a second Gap Closer. So that in and of itself is really nice to have. Uh, then we still have Freezing Trap, we still have Tar Trap, so we have Slow and CC. Then we still have Wing Clip, so this is a single target slow for when you, they're not in Tar Trap. We have a 5 second stun through our pet, uh, which is currently bugged. But then you can also take Binding Shot, which is a root, so it works just like in Legion, but instead of a stun it's a root. 
Then we have Steel Trap, which immobilizes the target, and as long as they don't take damage from anything other than Steel Trap, they won't be able to move. So that's kind of interesting. We still have Flare, we have Feign Death, we have Turtle, and now we also have Aspect of the Eagle, so we're able to DPS from pretty far. Um, so overall, Survival Hunter has an insane amount of utility, which is really nice to see because... Um, if you're a melee class who kind of has either subpar damage or average damage, then you need some other things to make up for it. So what are my overall thoughts on the Survival Hunter? Well, the rework seems fairly smooth, and I like that the spec went from a very plate-juggling playstyle to a more straightforward, uh, easier to understand, less micromanagement playstyle. So that's going to be a very nice change for a lot of people. The spec feels fairly smooth to play on single target and on AoE. And once the talents get fixed, I see a lot of potential for different builds that people can use. One thing that maybe I don't like too much at the moment is that with the current top build, there's not too much room for min-maxing. And that mostly comes from this current build being one where you just press all of your abilities and you want to keep absolutely everything on cooldown and then just spend your focus on one spender so i don't know overall there's not too much room for min maxing maybe with other builds like the mongoose build if that becomes viable there will be a little more room and it will be a little more difficult to play but other than that uh survival hunter feels pretty nice to play it has a lot of utility compared to other melee DPS, but then again, it kind of needs a lot of utility. The big drawback of Survival Hunter is that it's a melee class, and a lot of raids have kind of melee caps when, you, when it comes to Mythic, where you don't really want to take more than 6, maybe 7 melee on particular fights, some even less. So... And there's also already a lot of really good melee specs in the game. So Survival Hunter being a melee spec is kind of its own detriment. Because ultimately when you go into a raid, are you going to take a rogue or are you going to take a Survival Hunter? Obviously when it comes to heroic and kind of lower level mythic, it doesn't matter all that much. But for cutting edge progression, Survival Hunter needs to do insane damage to compete with other melee. And if the damage is there, then potentially there will be players who play survival. But the other two specs on it are both ranged. You have BM and you have Marksman. So if they're all doing the same damage, then ultimately you will play one of the ranged specs. Thank you so much for watching the Survival Hunter preview. And if I missed any changes, please leave them in the comments section. Because with Survival Hunter, there were a lot of changes. And I tried to go through all of them and categorize them as logically as possible but when there's a full spec overhaul there's some things that i miss that maybe you might have noticed so i will make sure to pin those if i see them in the comment section again thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did please hit the like button and sub to the channel and i'll see you on the next one